This movie deals with moments of force and static equilibrium with respect to rotary motion. It is intended for viewing before students do a laboratory experiment using a meter stick to illustrate the second condition for equilibrium. For simplicity, we will restrict ourselves to cases where the force vectors are all on the same plane. Upon completion of the laboratory activity associated with this movie, students will be expected to be able to define and calculate torque, describe the conditions for equilibrium and illustrate the second condition for equilibrium, define and illustrate center of gravity, and use the second condition of equilibrium to determine unknown masses. A rotating object is said to have an unbalanced torque. Torque is associated with a force acting on the object. Consider the diagram shown here, where force F is acting on the blue object at point P. If the object is rotating counterclockwise around point O, we can calculate the torque due to force F. Torque is equal to the force times the moment arm of the force. The moment arm, also known as the lever arm, is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the line of action of the force. The axis of rotation is a line perpendicular to the plane of the screen. Imagine looking at point O so that the line from your eye to point O is perpendicular to the plane of the screen. That would be the axis of rotation. This is the line of action of the force. Now imagine a line from point O that is perpendicular to the line of force. Here's that line. It is perpendicular to the line of force if it forms a right angle. That is, a 90 degree angle. Where the two lines intersect is shown here as point R. The perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the line of force is simply the length of the line segment OR. That is, the distance from point O to point R. This distance is called the moment arm or lever arm of the force. In other words, in this example, the magnitude of the torque due to force F is equal to the magnitude of force F times the distance from point O to point R. Typically, algebraic signs are assigned to torques depending on whether they tend to cause clockwise or counterclockwise rotation of an object. For our purposes, we will take a positive torque as the one that tends to cause clockwise rotation and a negative torque as the one that tends to cause counterclockwise rotation. Consider the diagram shown here. Suppose a force of 15 newtons acts on the blue object at point P and the axis of rotation goes through point O. If angle ORP is the right angle and the OP and PR distances are 50 and 30 centimeters respectively. What is the moment arm of the force? The moment arm of the force is simply its perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. That is, the distance from point O to point R, as shown in the diagram. Since triangle ORP is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the length of OR from the lengths of OP and PR. OR squared plus PR squared equals OP squared. If you do this, you will find that the length of OR is 40 centimeters. The torque is simply the product of F and the moment arms. 15 newtons times 40 centimeters or 0 0.4 meters equals 0 0.6 zero zero newton meters. Since the force shown causes the object to rotate counterclockwise, we assign a negative value to it. The torque then is equal to negative zero point six zero zero newton meters. Consider the meter stick shown in the picture. It is suspended somewhere near the middle. The axis of rotation goes through the pivot point the point from where the meter stick is suspended. 40 centimeters from the pivot point is a 72 gram mass consisting of a lever clamp and a hanger that exerts a downward force on the meter stick. 
Assuming that the meter stick shown here is parallel to the ground, calculate the clockwise torque due to the lever clamp and hanger. The torque is equal to the product of the force and the moment arm of the force. The force or weight is pointing toward the ground. It is perpendicular to the ground. Since the meter stick is parallel to the ground, the moment arm is simply the distance from pivot point to the point of action of the force. That is 40 centimeters or 0.4 meters. The weight of the hanger and torque is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. 0.072 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared is equal to 0.706 newtons. The torque is equal to 0.706 newtons times 0.40 meters or 0.28 newton meters. What if the stick were tilted so that the far end is elevated by a 45 degree angle? What would be the torque? In this case, the moment arm will be equal to 40 centimeters times cosine of 45 degrees, which is equal to 0.283 meters. And the resulting torque is 0.706 newtons times 0.283 meters, or 0.20 newton meters. An object is said to be in a state of equilibrium if two conditions are met. First, the vector sum of all the forces acting on it must be zero. When this condition is met, then the object has no tendency to change its linear velocity. That means, if it is moving, it will continue to do so at a constant speed and in the same direction. If it is at rest, it stays motionless. The second condition is that the algebraic sum of all the torques on the object is zero. When this condition is met, then the object has no tendency to rotate. The torques that tend to make the object rotate clockwise are balanced by forces that tend to make it rotate counterclockwise. The concept of center of gravity is important in solving problems dealing with torques and rotation. Whenever we need to consider the force of gravity, we assume that it is applied at one point. We refer to this point as the center of gravity of the object. Consider the meter stick shown here. Here is the pivot point. If the center of gravity is to the right of the pivot point, then there will be a net torque that will make the stick rotate clockwise. On the other hand, if the center of gravity is to the left of the pivot point, then there will be a net torque that will make the stick rotate counterclockwise. If the pivot point is exactly at the center of gravity, then there is no net torque on either side of the pivot point. The meter stick will be perfectly parallel to the ground and in equilibrium. Suppose the meter stick shown here is parallel to the ground, has a mass of 50 grams, and the pivot point is located 2 centimeters right of the center of gravity. What is the torque and how would the stick rotate? The moment arm is 20 centimeters. If the pivot point is 20 centimeters right of the center of gravity, then the force of gravity is applied 20 centimeters left of the pivot point. The force is calculated by multiplying the mass by the acceleration due to gravity. To calculate the torque, we multiply the force by the moment arm of the force, which is 20 centimeters. This gives us torque of negative 0.098 newton meters. The torque is negative because it will make the stick rotate counterclockwise. In this experiment, you will explore the effects of hanging weights on a meter stick. The masses are engraved on the weights except for the lever clamps. To determine the masses of the lever clamps, you will use a triple beam balance. You will also need the balance to determine the mass of the meter stick. Here's the proper procedure for using the balance. First, you need to zero the balance. Move all the riders to the zero marks on the left side of the beams. Adjust the knob on the far left beneath the pan, so that the beams are perfectly horizontal. 
The pointer should be centered as shown in the picture when you let go of the knob. With the balance properly zeroed, put the sample to be weighed on the pan. This will cause the pointer to tip up. Move the riders until the beam is perfectly horizontal again. First move the heaviest rider to the right, one notch at a time until the pointer tips down. Then move it back one notch. Do likewise with the second heaviest rider. Finally, move the smallest rider to balance the beam. Read the notches where the riders are located to determine the mass of the object in the pan. The first part of this experiment involves the determination of the center of gravity of the meter stick. For most of this experiment, you will need to set the pivot point at the center of gravity of the meter stick. Remember that when this is done, the meter stick should be horizontal, that is, parallel to the ground, and in equilibrium. The center of gravity should be very close to, but may not be exactly at, the 50 centimeter mark. Suspend the meter stick such that the pivot point is located at the center of gravity and hang a total of 100 grams, 40 centimeters away from the pivot point. Your hanger should be about 50 grams and the lever clamps are around 20 to 25 grams. Add enough load to the hanger to get a total of 100 grams. Find the location on the other side where you need to hang a total of 200 grams to balance the stick. To set up the 200 gram weight, first add up the masses of the hanger and the lever clamp. Then add enough load to the hanger to get a total of 200 grams. Repeat with the 100 gram mass hung 30 centimeters away from the pivot point. Repeat again with the 100 gram mass hung 20 centimeters away from the pivot point. Please note that you do not need exactly 100 grams or 200 grams for this experiment. Just be sure to record the actual masses. Calculate the clockwise and counterclockwise torques and verify the second condition for equilibrium. Part 3 of this experiment is similar to part 2, except that you will split the 200 gram weight into two 100 gram weights. Find two different locations for the two 100 gram weights in order to balance a 100 gram weight located 40 centimeters from the pivot point on the other side of the stick. There should be more than one way of achieving this balance. Find at least three ways of doing it. Part 4 of this experiment illustrates an application of the second condition for equilibrium. You can use this principle to determine the mass of an unknown object. With the pivot point of the meter stick set at the center of gravity, hang an unknown mass 40 centimeters left of the pivot point. On the right side, 40 centimeters away, Find the weight that you need to hang in order to balance the stick. You will do a second trial where you find the balancing weight at 30 centimeters instead of 40 centimeters away from the pivot point. You will also do a third trial, this time finding the balance weight at 20 centimeters away from the pivot point. Knowing that the magnitudes of the counterclockwise and clockwise torques are equal when the stick is balanced, we can figure out the unknown mass. The torque on the left side of the stick is equal to the weight of the unknown mass times its moment arm or distance from the pivot point, represented here by S sub L. The weight of the unknown mass is equal to its mass, shown here as M sub L, times the acceleration due to gravity. Note that in the equation shown here, G cancels out. You do not have to worry about converting your mass units into kilograms and your moment arms into meters. The equation is valid as long as you use the same units on both sides of the equation. In other words, if you use grams and centimeters consistently, the unknown mass you calculate will be in grams. Finally, to assess how well you have determined the unknown mass using the meter stick, weigh it directly on a triple beam balance for comparison. Part 5 of this experiment illustrates how you can determine the mass of the meter stick itself. We do this by moving the pivot point away from the center of gravity. We can then imagine that the entire weight of the meter stick is applied at the center of gravity, creating a torque which needs to be balanced on the other side of the pivot point. For this experiment, hang a 100 gram weight 40 centimeters from the left of the center of gravity. Then, find the pivot point so that the meter stick is balanced. You should expect to find the pivot point between the point of application of the 100 gram weight and the center of gravity. 
once again use the second condition for equilibrium to calculate the mass of the meter stick. The counterclockwise torque left of the pivot point is due to the 100 gram weight. Clockwise torque right of the pivot point is due to the weight of the meter stick itself. Note that in the equation shown here the acceleration due to gravity g cancels out. You do not have to worry about converting your mass units into kilogram and your moment arms into meters. The equation is valid as long as you use the same units on both sides of the equation. In other words, if you use grams and centimeters consistently, the unknown mass you calculate will be in grams. Finally, to assess how well you have determined the mass of the meter stick, weigh it directly on a triple beam balance for comparison.